Hello everyone, welcome to Automation and Beam and G Drive. My name is Tim, and today we're going to be building an off-roader, something I have not done in a very, very long time. The closest thing to an off-roader that I've built recently is the Flex or the Torque Master, and those I built a couple months ago. So yeah, this is going to be the first thing I've built in a few years that is an off-roader, a certified off-roader. So yeah, let's go and make a car. For the actual body, we have a 2008 SUV, specifically the two-row, two-door variant. We're going to make it carbon fiber, probably going to do some truck chassis because we need this thing to be good off-road. Yeah, I think partial monocoque would be good, but yeah, steel. And I think front longitudinal, yeah, double wishbone, double wishbone. Now that I think about it, um... Yeah, these ones, solid axle leaf, are far better for off-roading than double wishbone. Seriously. And we're going to increase the quality a lot for this thing. We're going to increase it to such a point that this thing will probably cost a couple billion dollars to produce. For the engine, I chose a big old 9-liter V12 that makes about 600 horsepower and about 800 pound-feet of torque. We're going to do a 4x4, of course, and... Whichever one's best for off-roading, which... Manual. We're gonna do manual. Now, for our car, we're gonna give it a relatively low top speed. We don't want this thing to be a race car. We want this thing to be good on the mountains, good off-road, and stuff like that. We want this thing to have high ground clearance, so open differential. Actually, okay, yeah, manual locker. Manual lockers are the best for off-roading, for what I was able to find. You know... We're gonna... Okay, since there's new tires, I'm gonna see what there is. There's Rally, but... I, I don't know how good at off-roading they would be. Like, fast off-roading, yeah, but... I'm talking, like, casual off-roading. Like, you're climbing up a mountain in the desert or something like that. And it's not like you're going fast. You're just climbing up it casually. So, yeah, I think just normal chunky off-road would be good. We're going to give it really wide tires in the rear, decently wide tires in the front. We're going to give it steel rims because, well, I feel like that the tires should be heavier so we can lower this thing's center of gravity. And that's one of the reasons why I think they should be made of steel. Now, the footage you're seeing right here is heavily sped up because in real life, I spent like 15 minutes thinking about what the best look for this vehicle would be. Whether I wanted it to be blocky or smooth or something along those lines, I decided on a blocky smooth mixture because I want certain parts to be blocky, but I want other parts to be smooth because I want this thing to handle well off-road and on-road. I want this thing to be a really good vehicle. But now we are on to brakes, carbon ceramic. We're going to do that for the front at the very least. I'm not sure about the rear. Okay, let's see. Um, for the rear, I'm fairly certain that carbon ceramics aren't necessary. Because for off-roading, you almost never go that fast. We're going to do an off-road skid tray, of course. And I just, I just like looking at my vehicles while I make them. Just admiring them is something I like doing. We'll increase everything. Because budget is not something I've ever heard of. Yeah, we'll do good brake airflow. Probably decrease it, to be honest, because we're not going to be going super fast. And for the interior, okay, I want this thing to hold at least four people, minimum. So, yeah, five. It'll hold five people. It'll be a premium interior, premium infotainment, max quality. And so far, I think we're doing pretty good with this thing. Yep, that is the glorious engine in there. The glorious, glorious 600 horsepower V12 that's 9 liters. And let me say something, this thing is going to be awesome. Truly awesome. I want to give this thing a reliable steering system that's good for off-roading. Yeah, electric's pretty good. We're going to give it some stability controls and stuff like that for traction. Maximum quality, maximum safety. 
We're gonna make it heavier so that, well, it just sticks to the ground and stuff like that. You know what? Now that I think about it, steel body panels. Carbon fiber is expensive, and this thing's gonna be going off-road. You don't want to scratch up your carbon fiber. That's a stupid idea. Like, you don't want to scratch it up, particularly if you're in an SUV. You don't want to scratch it up. Now we are onto the suspension, and this is where it's going to get troublesome for me, because I am not good at making specialized transmissions. My transmission specialties are either one of the presets, one that's overly harsh, one that's overly squishy, and one that's just terrible. Yeah, that's basically my only suspension presets I know how to make. I do know how to make it comfortable, which is making it as squishy as possible with hydro pneumatic or air suspension. Yeah, something along those lines will give it maximum comfort, but yep, this thing right here has, I want to say, a lot of ground clearance, like over two feet of it. But you know what? I feel like 22 to 21 inches of ground clearance is plenty for this thing. For reference, that is more ground clearance than pretty much any car currently on the market. In fact, that G-Wagon 6x6, I don't even think that thing had that much ground clearance. And that thing could technically drive over a goat without running it over. Yeah, there was an actual test for that. It's pretty strange, though. But also, a very good demonstration of portal axles, which this game does not have. Now, according to the sales chart... We sold 216 of these, making it, believe it or not, one of my more profitable vehicles. Making it cheaper? Oh, wow, we're increasing sales by a lot. Like, seriously, people genuinely want to buy this. Like, it's not like my other cars where it literally says zero sales. Okay, this thing is about 4,400 pounds, so it's a bit heavy. And when I said this thing has a 9 liter... 600 horsepower V12, that was me talking in future tense, because as of right now, it currently doesn't have it. It has a 9.2 liter, 900 horsepower V12. But yeah, I'm gonna detune it, because I don't think this thing needs 900 horsepower. Now, if you're wondering why the fixture process is going so fast, turns out I spent about the equivalent of one runtime of Lord of the Rings Return of the King, which is like a three and a half hour long movie. I spent an equivalent amount of time to that movie's entire runtime designing the exterior and interior of this car. And I can press it down to about a minute for you guys, because personally, I don't want to make a video that's like four hours long of me just slowly designing a car with like stops in between where I just think about what I want and stuff like that. Like, I don't even think I could come up with enough commentary to make that video even worth watching. So yeah, I sped it up for you guys because that would be probably one of the most boring videos ever made. And now we are finally done with our time lapse, and I want to name this car, but I want to name it after a mountain range, similar to how I named the previous off-roader, Chihish. I'm going to call it Kyrgulin. Kyrgulin, if you don't know, is a mountain range in the Desolation Islands, which are this, which is the super remote island in the Indian Ocean that very few people have ever been to, and... Yeah, it's called the Desolation Islands for a very good reason. Just look at a map of it. Yeah, it is just surrounded by thousands of miles of water. Closest people to you are obviously the astronauts in the International Space Station. And now, let's go to Beam and G Drive. I can say something. The paint color on this thing looks really nice. It's like a red-orange hybrid, and oh my, the suspension is absolutely bouncy. This thing is like a bouncy castle on wheels, and uh, that's not exactly a good thing, but it's not exactly a bad thing, because my Chihish off-roader had stiffer suspension, and of course the camera isn't in the driver's seat. Yeah, probably because I spent so much time just modifying this thing, giving it so many little details on it, it just didn't know where to put the driver camera, which is okay because I absolutely love this car. And yeah, similar to how we did in the Yuno Muso video, we're gonna go out of bounds. Specifically, we're gonna go somewhere we absolutely should not be going. 
and this time, we're in a car with about six times as much horsepower, but about the same top speed. And on we go to break the laws of physics. And yeah, I think that we should definitely use our, um, our all-wheel drive for this thing. Because seriously, what's the point of being a 4x4 vehicle and not even using the all-wheel drive? Oh wow, that... I cannot get over just how bouncy the suspension on this thing is. Yeah, you know that Mercedes Maybach vehicle that has like bounce mode? That was originally designed to get you out of sand? But, you know, people instead just make their car dance instead. Yeah, I feel like this thing should have a very similar function solely for that. Because that would be absolutely wonderful. But yeah, this is like that one scene from Harry Potter, as I mentioned in the Yuno Musso video. It's like that one scene where Ron and Harry are flying in that old British car over the town and trying to get to Hogwarts before the train because they missed the train. And now, yeah, crashing into the mountain isn't that good, but traction is. The traction on this thing is phenomenal, particularly up this road. We're currently going up like a 35 degree incline and it is wonderful. We do have to like nearly redline this thing, but that's okay. This thing is a little heavier than the Chihish, and also not as powerful. The Chihish has about 888 horsepower. This has 600. But something I will say about this, this thing feels more like an actual off-roader than the Chihish. The Chihish is basically, it's a shooting brake with like a lift kit, like a lifted truck lift kit, and a ridiculously powerful inline four. One that is a 1.3 liter turbocharged one that, as I said earlier, makes 888 horsepower, which is like Formula One levels of power. For off-road performance, this thing drives wonderfully, particularly at low speeds, because, well, nothing drives good at high speeds when not on a track or a road. But yeah, if this were a real vehicle and I were in the market for an off-road SUV, I'd probably consider this. Because, well, this thing is a super reliable engine. It gets okay fuel economy for what it is. And you can go pretty much anywhere. Oh, looks like we just reached the edge. Should I jump off? Should I drive off? Oh, it's a hill. A really steep hill, but I think we could drive down it. Because, let me say something, if we drive down, can we possibly fall through the map? Because I remember doing that in my Mordwagen video, that one, where I managed to go like 7.5 million miles. And yeah, if we can possibly do that in this, that would be incredibly cool. But let's see, so far we're actually doing pretty good. Going down the hill isn't even a challenge. And wow, just, oh, oh no. Well, with this, you know what time it is. It's time to go to the drag strip, of course. And we're racing it against my original off-roader, the 4SB Chihish, which is named after Muchu Chihish, the tallest legally climbable unclimbed mountain in the world. And, go! It is definitely safe to say that we are losing, like big time. I feel like our suspension is just too bouncy for a drag race because the whole car shifts forward and back like it's jello or pudding. Seriously, the car shifts like that. And of course we lost. We got about a 13 second quarter mile. And as a form of revenge, I'm just gonna crash into my opponent. Yeah. like. Part of their rear end is completely totaled. Meanwhile, our front end, perfectly fine. Now this car right here is the Group B Monstro, which has a an 8.5 liter inline six that makes about 900 horsepower. So we're probably gonna lose against this. That right there is basically the ultimate rally car. But yeah, we are definitely losing because of course our suspension's super bouncy. 
This thing otherwise is actually really fast, especially for an off-road vehicle, because I don't think an off-road vehicle is able to really do a quarter mile that quickly. And you know what? I might crash into my opponent this time. Oh, uh, yeah, we are the one that got damaged, not them. So I think we should go to the next race, which is none other than the Torque Master. This thing is about 4,500 horsepower, and I want to say about 7,600 newton meters of torque, which is absolutely overkill. So much so that I'm fairly certain most of it isn't even usable because automation doesn't have dualies. And now, yeah, uh, as I said earlier, way too bouncy, just, yeah. They were just able to go straight forward no bounce. Whenever this thing shifts, it just bounces all over the place. But you know what? It's getting pretty good quarter mile times for what it is. And let me say this, every opponent I have chosen so far somehow has gotten 10 second quarter miles. Whether it be like 10.5 or 10.0 weight, it's 10. Now, we're going to fight against the base model Renault Caraf which has a 2.6 liter V8, making about 505 horsepower, and has a towing capacity of about 6,000 pounds. So, let's get ready, and yeah, of course, the suspension fails us again, along with the transmission, because this thing is just... I don't know why this thing bounces so much. I should have probably made the suspension more stiff, in all honesty, because seriously... I definitely should have made it more stiff because this thing is barely drivable in the city. But that's not the last drag race we're doing. We're going to do another one. It's going to be pretty cool. And my opponent is, of course, another one of this. That's right, a second Kurgulen. Now, their vehicle is white because they were too poor to afford this awesome paint job. And now, let's go. Okay, yeah, I think you can understand why this thing is a terrible drag car, because this thing would be an awesome party vehicle, like the Maybach SUV. Okay, there is no way we did better than them. There is no way. They crossed the line before us, but yet we somehow went faster. Oh, yeah. The reason why I think we went faster is because in Warhammer 40k, there's this idea among the orcs that when you paint something red, it goes faster. Now, we have Chappie Frog from Grog TV, the car that I featured in my Uno Musso video. And now, that thing is 469 horsepower from a garbage V12. And let's see how we do. Oh my... I actually thought we could beat them, but no. Despite the, how trash that car is when it comes to performance, this thing is still slower. And of course, 12 second quarter mile for them. Just, just why? I want to crash into them so bad. You know what? I'm probably not going to do that. It'll probably mess up my vehicle's steering system basically making the vehicle slowly stray towards another side. So, next vehicle, that's right, we're going to test the Turbine Thrasher powered squatted truck. This is going to be our last drag race before we do some real hardcore off-roading. And, okay, this truck right here, I'm just going to give them a head start because they basically have bicycle tires. And let me say this. It's a front-wheel drive, 3,000 horsepower bicycle tire truck. I think that's a horrible idea for any engineer. And pretty much any automotive engineer would understand that is a terrible idea. Because just... I, I don't even think I have to explain that. Pretty much anyone with the most basic knowledge of how a car's suspension works and just overall traction would understand putting 3,000 horsepower to the front wheels only is a terrible idea. And you know what? Now I think about it, we're going to check on them because 
I only took like 15 seconds, and they are not even close to being done. Nope. Yeah. Yeah, right now I'm just testing how bouncy this thing's suspension is, and... Yeah, this is me not even trying to floor it. This is me just gradually pressing the key because I don't have one of those fancy Beam and G drive setups. I hope to get one of those. It'll probably make this thing much better to drive. And oh my. Yeah, their wheels fell off. They spun their wheels off. Because let me say this. That engine's too powerful. And also... I'm really impressed that I was able to flip my own car over by going backwards and turning like that, because this thing's pretty heavy, and I did not expect it to be that top-heavy. So yeah, as all the oil rushes towards the top of the engine, we're gonna go to our off-road section, specifically in the Stelvio Pass map. Now, I actually featured this map in a different video, particularly a YouTube short involving my Turbine Thrasher with the background song Under Grass and Clover by Children of Bodom. Now, this thing right here, truly, okay, right now, functions really good. And considering that this stuff is snow and has, well, different, yeah. I'm fairly certain the snow in this game is actually programmed to have a different texture and a different grip to it, which is something pretty nice, because I feel like some other games, they just make the snow, like, pretty much the same thing, but it's just a retexture. I like that the snow in this game is like a genuine challenge for this thing. Well, I don't, because it's annoying. But let me say something. This thing, I will try to get it up to the top of that hill, to that abandoned house outlook castle thing up there, because, yeah, that thing. Right by my, I don't know what that is, pitch or yaw, I'm not sure. Basically, it's by my cruise control settings on the left side of the screen. Now, yeah, this thing is handling decently well. It is a bit bouncy, but yeah, now that I think about it, I think it's kind of a good thing that I didn't give it the stiffest suspension possible, because it would be bouncing all over the place, because... Well, tires are bouncy, they're made of rubber. Okay. We're doing pretty good right now. And considering that this is basically a thick blanket of snow we're going up, that's pretty impressive. Okay, oh no, we just flipped over. Yeah. Flipping over is just something that this vehicle struggles with. Like, that is probably the biggest safety issue for this vehicle. Not the fact that its suspension is super bouncy, but the fact that this thing flips over so easily. I literally put it into reverse, turned it, and then flipped it over back at the drag strip. That's how easy this thing can be flipped. And okay, we have some rocks here, but we do not appear to be doing good. At all. Like, I bet you even if I were in the forest, yeah, I'd still be struggling for this. And when I say Forest B, I mean the Jahish version, the first drag vehicle. First vehicle we raced against in our drag race. And yeah, unfortunately this thing can't get up there. And oh my, we almost tipped over again. And yeah, that's the issue. This thing's throttle is way too powerful. Like, I hope to get like an actual like pedal and steering wheel setup for Beam and G Drive because I feel like driving would be significantly easier if I had one of those. Because I just wouldn't have to deal with accidentally flooring my vehicle and flipping it over. But yeah. Right now I found this little side chute that is also incredibly steep. It's like a 40 or so degree incline. Which, for any car, is an absolute n t nightmare. Regardless of what tires you have. And just... Okay, so far we're doing pretty decent at going nowhere. You thought I was going to say decent and getting up the hill. Nope, we're going nowhere. Absolutely nowhere, and it's making me upset. 
I've sped up this segment right here because I basically tried to spend the next three minutes trying to get up this mountain to absolutely zero avail. Like, nothing has worked, pretty much. Going that side doesn't work. Changing the gravity doesn't even work. Like, seriously. Lower gravity doesn't work. Probably not enough traction. So, I'm just gonna jump out of it and climb the mountain by foot at this point. Because... That will be probably easier and more efficient. Yeah, my goal is to get to that castle and just... Well, that's pretty much my goal for this video. Just get up to the castle and probably just jump around, try to get to the top of it or something like that. And oh wow, this definitely feels like the moon. Just, I feel like I'm climbing a mountain on the moon because I'm going really slow. And that vehicle was just falling down the mountain really slow as well. But, on the bright side, we have plenty of... Okay. Yeah, I just increased the gravity to that of Uranus. And, well, it's just slightly more than Earth. And, yeah, so far it's actually doing pretty good. We can get up the hill and we just reached the highest point of this little mountain. And now, it is off to the castle, because I personally really want to go to the top of that castle. Okay, let's jump on these rocks real quick, just to see how bouncy our legs are. Like, I feel like our legs have, like, some suspension recoil built into them. It's pretty interesting. How I feel right now, let me explain. So, there's this video online of Neil Armstrong on the moon, just jumping around, going, like... Hippity hoppity, hippity hoppity, I think it's real footage. I don't know if it's modified, like the audio, but yeah, I'm fairly certain he did actually jump on the moon like that, and yeah. I'm going to decrease gravity because I want to go up there. And when I'm up there, okay, that is a that is very, very high negative gravity. I think that was like negative Earth or something like that. Okay. Oh! Yeah, I just abandoned my husk, and now I'm a ghost, a astral projecting. And, okay, yeah, the view up here is absolutely spectacular. My little ghost of mine, actually, no, that's not my ghost, that's my corpse. I'm the ghost right now. And where did my car go? Like, seriously, how far could it have gone? I think it definitely went down this side of the mountain, and... Oh, it's in that little ravine right here. And yeah. Unfortunately, we did not follow tradition. This vehicle did not fall into a river, but it fell into a ravine that's close enough. And anyway, that's all.